against Adnan Sayed, the man whose case gained nationwide attention after it was featured in the hit podcast Serial. He was released from prison last month after serving 22 years for the 1999 murder of his ex-girlfriend. Here to discuss the latest is Sergeant Betsy Smith, spokesperson for the National Police Association. Sergeant, welcome to the show. Why have prosecutors dropped charges against Sayed? Well, what uh, the prosecutor, Marilyn Mosby, is saying is that additional evidence has come forward that did not actually make it into trial. Now, this is controversial because a lot of what is happening is being done without really any involvement from the victim's family. Now, there's supposed to be two other people perhaps involved in this murder, but unfortunately, a big part of this case that got famous because of a podcast, uh, what's happening is that the the victim's family is kind of being pushed to the side. And that's something that's not untypical these days in our criminal justice system, especially with Marilyn Mosby, who's known to be an activist prosecutor, um, because we've got to make sure that the victim's family is being treated just as equitably as the offender who, or potential offender who has been in prison for all these years. So the charges were dropped after a second round of touch DNA testing. It was completed on items that were never tested before. Why wasn't this done before? Was it because the technology simply wasn't there? What's the reason here? That's absolutely correct. Technology, when it comes to forensic processing, is, you know, it, it moves at light year speed now. But, you know, decades ago when this case came to uh, fruition and came to prosecution, that technology did not exist. And I want to caution people just because there are possibly two other suspects in this case. And again, we don't know all the circumstances. Um, just because there's two other suspects doesn't mean the initial a uh, person who was convicted of her murder is not also involved. We also have to recognize, and I was a detective for many years, that just because someone's DNA is not on evidence doesn't mean they weren't involved in the crime. And, you know, groups of people can commit crimes. So we have to let this play out. And And the initial suspect is on home arrest, and I think that that's appropriate until we find out exactly uh, what may have occurred and what the reinvestigation, which is happening right now, uh, may show us. We've seen many murder convictions dropped or overturned over the last few years, Sergeant, as you well know. How can we fix the justice system so that innocent people don't have to spend time behind bars? Well, when you say many, it's not really many. Uh, when you're When you compare it with the number of people that we take to trial or convict of murder. Here's the thing. The American justice system is the finest system in this world, in our opinion. We take a lot of time to make sure that we are presenting evidence that the state has the burden. In other words, the government has the burden to prove the case. And yes, sometimes people are wrongly convicted, but although the, the cases where people were perhaps, perhaps wrongly convicted, they make the news, all of the cases where we convicted, uh, convict people of murder don't necessarily make the news. But because of alternate media, podcasting, things like that, we tend to hear about those cases more. And that's a good thing. We want to make sure that everyone who is in prison for a serious crime is there because they deserve to be there. So that's, we applaud these kind of efforts. Yeah, that's a really good point. Thank you for talking us through this. Sergeant Betsy Branther-Smith, spokesperson for the National Police Association. Thank you.